Language is always a fascinating topic when moving to Asia. Nonetheless, language is a concern for many travellers. So today, we will be going over some facts and figures and addressing the most common concerns around language when moving to Southeast Asia. According to the English Proficiency Index, Asia has a mixture of index scores. Thus, it's best not to look at this with a 100% guarantee, but instead as a good guideline. As we can see from the score, communication can be much easier easier or much more challenging depending on the area that you are living in. But one piece of information that's often not taken into account when looking at English proficiency is the location within the country. Thailand, for example, is a country that we often speak about here at Isle of Asia headquarters. Based on the information, it can be presumed that Thai residents have a low level of English proficiency, but this is a generalization. If you live in Bangkok or Phuket, for example, you will often find that the English proficiency is much higher due to the interaction between locals and expats. Taking a look at a different country such as the Philippines shows us that one of the benefits of living in this country is that no matter what area you are living in, it is highly likely that you will be able to communicate with locals effectively. The English proficiency score also looks at several different areas. Therefore, you may meet individuals who in theory score low on the English proficiency score but can communicate effectively in reality. Many countries in Asia rely on tourism. Thailand travel industry, for example, contributes between 15 to 20% of its overall GDP. And this is why the ongoing pandemic and restrictions have been very challenging for Thailand in general. This is mentioned because many countries across Asia make living comfortable for foreign visitors visitors, and you will find English available across many areas and cities. Nonetheless, the great thing about living in Southeast Asia is that there are plenty of opportunities to learn the local language. On average, student visas are very cost effective. You can learn the local language at a university, private school, or through online tutoring. However, the education provider must be registered and be able to accept international students. Dating is also another concern for many that are looking to live in Southeast Asia. In any relationships, communication is important and there may be times that you wish to talk about more serious and complex matters. And this can be a slight challenge with non-native speakers. I've spoken to many expats over the years who have had some extraordinary stories of dating experiences that have gone wrong due to communication breakdowns. This is where learning the local language is often beneficial. In addition, from feedback from others, it seems that communication barriers is one of the most challenging hurdles that foreigners face when dating locals. In this situation, you may be slightly limited. I often see this situation like an opportunity. In other words, if you are a native speaker and you are communicating with a non-native speaker, it allows you the opportunity to break down complex ideas into simple English, which can be challenging, but this practice will enable you to communicate much more effectively as a whole while living in Asia. 